Hey guys, so Cyberstorm Access format is right around the corner, so I thought what I would do is analyze some tournament data that use Cyberstorm Access cards and just go over the deck list, some of the decks that were entered, as well as the most played hand traps and staples. And so these tournaments were hosted by Dragon Rider Games, which I am an official broadcast partner of. And also before we continue, big thanks to my other sponsors as usual, links and discount codes below for yu gi supplies that you can use. And so as just mentioned, certainly make sure to check out Dragon Rider Games on Facebook so that you can join some competitive Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments online, which is certainly nice if you don't have many IRL events in your area. And also definitely make sure to check out my friend Team Set Pass on YouTube. He does also provide a lot of analytical meta content in terms of regional top data, for example, and is also another partner of Dragon Rider Games. And so definitely make sure to check these guys out. I'll link down uh, below. So in terms of the decks that were entered in their tournaments uh, at Dragon Rider Games uh, for the Sayak format, and of course these are not decks that top, but rather just all the decks that uh, entered, and so they hold uh, more so multiple tournaments of, uh, I think these were more smaller size events, just on a multiple basis, and so of course because it's Sayak legal for these, uh, you're probably going to have players that are more inclined to try out these new decks such as Super Heavy Samurai and Pearly, uh, but at the same time it's probably safe to assume that these are definitely some of the best decks uh, entering into the format, if not the best at least for super heavy samurai so you do see that uh being the most represented followed by pearly and then kashira which is currently the best deck at least as of this format before we head into this new format and also keep in mind at the time of recording no ban list has dropped yet so if that also drops that might change things uh kashira but we also have dragon leg technically i should have put this as Bis shield dragon i think uh but you know what it's still kicking we had some labyrinth math mech i think it's still gonna be very good going into next format uh we have branded despia which of course you know don't get me wrong this is not a lot of decks but it's certainly uh, shrinking in terms of representation but I was a little bit surprised that you know because this is Sayak format legal and again as mentioned players are probably excited to try out the new cards so I thought there would be more branded considering that we got you know Guiding Quem uh, and Alice uh, Sanctifier Dragon and the like uh, really good support but you know what it might still be a little bit challenging depending on how the format evolves uh, we had some Sword Soul, I think it's still solid, but you know, it didn't get any new support like some of these uh, decks that we were seeing on this pie chart. Uh, Batamorphia, I believe they actually did get new support, someone correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if it actually came in this or is about to come in Sayak or any future set, but you know what, it's still there. Uh, Tri Brigade, this is actually Tri Brigade Sprite. So a Sprite, I think, is obviously still solid. It's kind of another deck where, you know, you can play a lot of hand traps and is uh, quite consistent. Uh, but at least for this tournament, I guess it didn't see a lot of play. And then this little image that's squished there, it is Rika. Another uh, really good deck right now. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to be moving into the next format. Especially if a lot of players are starting going to start playing Dimension Shifter again because of Super Heavy Samurai. Which, of course, that's one of the reasons during tier format where Rika uh, sort of struggled. Of course, that also had a lot to do with the fact that they were Grave Shufflers. So those were some of the decks that entered. And then let's go over some of the topping deck lists. Now, this is uh, first place in one of the tournaments by Bilal uh, for Super Heavy Samurai. So I'm not actually going to go over any of these deck lists in detail at all. Uh, I'm certainly not an expert in any of these new decks, and I'm not going to pretend like I am. So I'm just going to put these uh, on the screen, and you can always just pause, and hopefully you know what all the cards are. And if you don't, leave a comment down below. I'm sure other people will be uh, more than happy to help. But what I think I want to comment more so is, you know, in terms of Super Heavy Samurai, we already know uh, that it's just uh, has insane one card combos that can just create a cre pretty insane board. But I think what I'm more scared of is just the amount of flex spots it has in terms of non-engine cards because you see, you know, these playsets of Drolls and Ashes and Mourners and Droll, or rather Gamma, Ogre, and even Fenrir. Uh, so it's pretty insane. So you have, you know, you can, even if it loses Dyro and goes second, it might still have a pretty solid chance, at least against any other deck that's not Super Heavy Samurai. Uh, and then you look at some of the uh, cards in the side. Danko Seka, uh, it's really good against backward decks. I'm not sure if there's going to be a lot of those moving to the next format now that Labyrinth and Trap Tricks were already on the decline. Of course, Trap Tricks is more of a combo deck than Backro deck, I suppose. Artrina Centric, I think, is another one that people are uh, really clamoring about, uh, probably having to use because this deck cannot use, like, your traditional spells and traps. So you need to have another way of being able to out any kind of floodgates. Nibiru, I think, is also pretty solid. Retaliating C, I think, is more so for that pearly matchup. It's sort of uh, another kind of like dimension shifter-like effect. Uh, and then Spell Cancer, this is the one I'm quite scared of. I'm not actually sure how common this card is going to be. Uh, from the different deck lists I've seen, not all of them play it. I mean, of course, instead, they might play like the Severstein, you know, exterior kind of line, which is still just as scary. But Spell Cancer, I think that's going to be really, really hard for a lot of different decks, and it's going to make uh, Rogue decks uh, pretty hard to play as well and then Bis shields that's kind of interesting too and i'll comment down uh, more on that and later when we get to the top plate hand traps 
Uh, and then another interesting one is actually by the same player. I guess in another tournament, he finished second place with this. Uh, and that is Mathmex Super Heavy. So uh, people who are familiar with this kind of deck, certainly let me know in the comments uh, how this deck functions and, you know, what kind of end board uh, it ends on. Uh, because, you know what, it's pretty interesting because, of course, with Mathmex, you know, just circular on its own is pretty nice and you can pop off. But now you also have these Super Heavy uh, Samurai cards, which can also pop off with just, like, one card. And I think what's interesting and pretty impressive with this kind of deck or at least this deck list, is that despite meshing two different archetypes, you still have room to play 10-ish uh, non-engine hand traps, uh, which is really, really crazy and scary to think about, and that's sort of how the game has uh, clearly evolved nowadays compared to even just like 3-4 years ago where, you know, the top meta decks, combo decks, like yes, they were very strong if they were going first, but they did not have nearly this much room for all these hand traps in their main deck. On uh, the side, I think one thing I want to point out is the Anti-Spell Fragrance, which is another card that I mentioned in my Banlist prediction of how I'm a little bit scared of that if this card uh, will start seeing a lot of play just to combat uh, Super Heavy Samurai because they do need their scales and you cannot scale under Anti-Spell. And you know, even though it's nice to have this hard counter against Super Heavy Samurai, uh, at the same time, Anti-Spell I think is going to affect way more other decks and that becomes problematic. And this is a card that was in uh, debate of uh, being banned uh, like a year ago, at least people were clamming for it during that branded Destria format. So hopefully uh, this gets addressed, but kind of doubtful. And then finally, another deck list that I can share that I have permission to is uh, Pearly by Laura. I think, again, I'm not an expert in any of these new decks, uh, unfortunately not yet at least. Uh, so I think I'm going to assume the spells are pretty standard in terms of ratios. I think uh, what's impressive with this deck, again, similar to Super Heavy Samurai, although maybe not at the same level, is that it can also play a lot of flex spots in terms of hand traps. And this deck can also draw a lot, and not only that, also add from Grave a lot as well, so it has a lot of advantage and it's funny in my balance prediction video someone actually made a comment how you know why is masterpiece banned when you know you have something like the uh, the black cat one in pearly that's just unaffected by everything and on top of that you know they generate so much advantage in terms of draws or adding from grave so you know what maybe that person has a point but you know uh to be seen whether how good this deck is going to be in the next format i think kurkara in the side that's something also that might see uh at the very least same level of play as it is now uh herald of the abyss is another one that uh i only had a few deck lists to work with in terms of most played hand traps and staples that i'll show very soon uh but that's something that people are thinking of as well as exceeds encore of course for that pearly matchup uh, which has not seen play since the vft format with virtual world uh, back in 2020 ish and then dimension shifter from my understanding in pearly it's not optimal but you kind of need it just for that super heavy samurai matchup and then finally uh, in terms of the most played hand traps unfortunately i only had seven deck lists to work with in terms of analyzing uh these deck lists so certainly not representative so definitely uh be cautious with what you're gonna see uh but i think this is gonna be pretty straightforward right droll seen in all of those deck lists that were available that's against super heavy samurai they add a lot uh, and interestingly enough someone made a point about how you know maybe gamma should be hit similar to ocg or master duo where you know what at least it reduces like super heavy's chance of being able to stop that droll on the first ad but i'm not sure how that's gonna go another hand trap that is uh gonna see more play at least at the beginning of the format as we kind of see how it goes is ghost ogre uh which is certainly nice uh for example against uh pearly uh, that continuous spell is pretty nice uh and so you know what this is a card that we haven't seen uh, relevant in the meta for quite some time. The last time this was relevant was when the Adventure Token stuff uh, first came out. So I believe in YCS Charlotte, uh, which was about, I guess, a year ago now. Uh, that saw a lot of play, but since then, it's declined a lot in play. And you uh, you can also check out my hand trap trend analysis video of the past year or so, uh, just to see how all of these hand traps map out in the past year of uh, competitive history. And then we have Ash again, we're only dealing with 7 deck lists. This is probably going to see a lot of play as well, especially with Branded, at least at the beginning. I think there's still going to be a lot of Branded players considering the uh, new support that we got. Uh, but of course, Ash is very, very detrimental against that strategy. But Ash is also the most generic of them all and can hit essentially every deck. Uh, we also have Nibiru. This is interesting. I think it's still going to see play next format as well, of course. It also really depends on the balance, whether it comes or not. I mean, we can't just ignore Kesh Tira right now. It's still a good deck, and Nibiru is a great uh, way to stop that deck as well, especially if they're not just going to do only Rise Heart Pass, uh, which seems to keep flipping back and forth in terms of what they go with. Uh, but Nibiru, I think, is still solid. Again, depends on the balance as well. Uh, this is a card that's going to always uh, go up and down in uh, any format. 
And then lastly, uh, Magnum, but this is also Druid's Worm as well. This was interesting. Uh, of course, Dragon, Bestial Dragon, they'll always play it. Uh, but you know what? This card is actually very, very strong against something like Branded or also Math Mech, especially when you draw Magnum. It's honestly insane how detrimental it can be to their core strategies because with Magnum, you can like stop that Albion effect. Uh, you know, it's good to stop the uh, gimmick puppet lock as well, for example. And with Math Mech, you know, you can not only stop their initial play, but you also have another uh, Bishop that you can add to kind of uh, interrupt that super uh, multifactorial play. So really, really solid. And it's a card that's completely vanished at the beginning after that balance that uh, took away Ishizu Tears, but has slowly started to come back, I've noticed, uh, at least at the regional level. And so in terms of the common side deck staples, unfortunately, because we are only working with seven deck lists, and I guess there was a bit too much variety as well, that there were only actually a few cards that were seen in more than just two deck lists, and that is uh, Dark Ruler, Feather Duster, and Talents. Now, of course, you know, as I mentioned, you know, maybe not representative because we're only working with seven deck lists, but at the same time, these are kind of pretty straightforward, right? I mean, Feather Duster was the most played staple in my YCS Top Cup breakdown that I did recently, and Dark Ruler is probably going to be pretty good uh, going to that super heavy samurai board uh, in the next Next format, although of course depends on how often they go into that uh, spell cancer route, in which case this card will be uh, useless. And then talents, you know, is this has been particularly really good since the Ashizu tier format, and even that after that format has ended, it's still been solid. And along with thrust, has been really really strong, and probably will be quite strong moving to the next format. And then there were other uh, staples that were seen in a couple deck lists, you know, yeah, something like Kurikar, card, Dev incarnate, Herald of the Abyss, uh, something like evenly match. So lots of options, obviously, for example, profile form of how rainbow magician uh that might be also uh one of the common cards that you'll see at least at the beginning of the format as you try to combat super heavy samurai uh so lots of lots of options i'm really excited for the next ycs uh event to come and to break down the most play hand traps and staples for that so stay tuned uh, and so that is it for the uh Sayak format quick breakdown of the most played hand traps and staples as well as some of the deck lists so hopefully you found that uh useful and uh, i'm sure you're all excited for this new format hopefully we also have a ban list on top of that just to make things uh and shake things up but anyways again thank you so much for watching a big thanks to my patrons as always uh for the support and well take care guys